The best time to be a math scholar is all the time. <laughs> oh, okay, I did, it. I did not mess it up. Hey, what's up, math scholars? It's Friday. Um, study guide today, study guide Monday, if we don't finish today. Uh, there's a Polaris homework. I activated it this morning. It's due at class time Tuesday. We're not going to do the midnight thing because I won't be here midnight Tuesday. I'll be on Thanksgiving break. Yeah! Yeah! Yo. All right. So we're just going to send up board buddies. Uh, if you are writing at Smartboard, keep your handwriting very neat because we saved this on the internet. And yeah, so there we go. Hey, every single group that came up got this right. We are using slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. I like putting an underline here and an underline here because that's where you will have numbers in your final solution. The y-intercept is called your b. The slope is called your m. So they did place the 4 correctly and they placed the negative 6 correctly. So good job, little math scholars. Questions on that one? Appreciate it. I appreciate your scholarly help up here. Anyway, that's not going away. I'll have to walk over my board, but I'm going to get eight more people answers. Okay, so this one we are getting a little more difficult. They provided the slope, which is your m. They provided an x and a y. Now this group used the equation y equals mx plus b to help them solve for b, because they didn't know b. So the y went right here, the m went right here. Actually, they have it reversed, but that's okay. The x went right here. When they multiply, they have negative 4. Add it to the other side, get 1. And then your final answer has the slope and the intercept in the correct spots. Y equals negative 2x plus 1. All right, we're going to get uh, eight more people up for number three. They're giving you m, x, and y, so it's the same concept. All righty. We got our negative 1 half put in for m. We have a 4 put in for y. This is actually 4. My 4 sometimes look like y's too. And then when they multiply this together, they got negative 2.5 that they had to add to the other side. So that gave them a 6.5 for their b. That's a b. And then their final answer is right here in this big box. Uh, y equals negative 1 half x plus 6.5. So that's a 1 half. Okay, questions on that one? Close this and see what's coming next. Ooh, okay, let's talk game plan before we send our scholars up. This is an x, this is a y. This is an x, this is a y. You have to get your slope and your intercept all by yourself. Do you have a question? Oh, yeah? Three? It says 4 equals 5 times negative 1 half. Yeah. Wouldn't it be flip-flop? Well, y okay. equals m times x plus b. Yeah, it is flip-flop, but it really doesn't matter because multiplication works the same forwards and backwards. Yeah, it's like adding works the same forwards and backwards. Okay, so do we have a scholar plan in place? We're going to find the slope first, and then we're going to solve for the intercept because they're not giving us either. This is, this is a difficult one. I only want the true scholar scholars coming to the board, okay? So I picked the six most scholarly scholars in all the land. Actually, I think seven or eight people end up coming up. Um, they ended up getting a slope. This is a very nice work. Uh, y minus y, x minus x. They got a slope of negative two. Then they picked their favorite x and y. Looks like their favorite was the one in zero. I would have picked that as my favorite too. They put their y in for y, their m in for m, their x in for x, and they solved for b. It ended up being a positive 2 after they moved the negative 2 over to the other side. And there's your answer. Negative 2 x plus 2. Great work. That's a hard problem. <laughs> All right. We've arrived to point slope form. So I was curious if you guys could sing the song really loud for the people in the video to hear. Ready? Go. Y minus Y equals slope. X minus X. I don't know if it picked up Jose's voice from the back, but he was very passionate singing that. Y minus Y equals slope. Yeah. X minus X. Now, the song does you no good if you don't know where to put your underlines and where the numbers have to go in. So underline your second Y, your M, and your second X. And it's your job to place the slope in one XY coordinate. So anybody can do this one very easily. It's such an easy problem. <laughs> okay. <coughs> y minus 10. I'm just going to write it a little neater, okay? y minus 10 equals slope x minus 2. So very good job. It is the correct answer. It's just a little sloppy. Uh, okay, so 6. 
Before I send the scholars up, we need a plan. We always need to be a scholar with a plan. So you're going to find the slope, and then you're going to pick your favorite XY to compile it. What's your favorite XY? Two, three. Two, three. The two, three? Okay. Two, three, baby. So let's send our people up. Okay, the slope they ended up getting after they did Y minus Y over X minus X is a 2 over negative 3. So, hey, one last reminder about slopes. It, they wrote it 2 over negative 3. If you write it negative 2 over 3, is that the same thing? Yeah. And then if you write it negative 2 thirds, is that the same thing? Yeah. yeah. So like on my paper, I just wrote it negative 2 thirds. But this is okay too. Y minus Y equals slope. X minus X. They got all their numbers in the right spot. And this is the an answer. Good work. Number seven. Looks like we're converting. This should be a piece of cake. Let's come up with a plan, a scholar plan. What's our plan to uh, convert? Okay. Austin's got a plan. What's our plan? Distribute. Distribute through the negative one half and then subtract over the eight. Very good. We got a plan. Okay, so let's just talk about what they did. They distribute their negative one half and then they subtract their eight. Hey, we're on video right now. Okay. So it is 9.17. We're going to call it quits here. If you think you'll lose the paper, I'll keep it for you. Just put it up here in front of Camden. And then the only homework, if you want to do it, is you can start the Polaris review. Now, if you want to save it till Monday night, that's okay with me, too, if you want your weekend off. Okay? Thanks for watching our super short six-minute video. Thank you. What's up, math scholars? So there is a quiz tomorrow, and it's a little disturbing how many people I've run across today that have forgot everything over the weekend. So if you forgot everything over the weekend, like you literally don't even know how to find a slope right now, I would go back and watch the study guide videos. There'll be two videos in Polaris, the one we recorded on Friday, and this one that goes over all the study um, guide questions. There is a Polaris review. Several people have already submitted it, so way to be on the ball with that. Um, it's homework for everybody else who hasn't done it yet, and it's due Tuesday at the end of class, so we don't have a midnight due date like going on like that, okay? Hey, who's excited that tomorrow's Friday? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, so a racquetball is charging $20 for a one-month trial membership. How can we use that number? A y-intercept. And then the 28 per month is going to be your slope. So this is not bad. You can uh, just put it straight into slope-intercept form. Now there's a little bit of trick to this, and I don't really like the trick. But the trick is that m is 28 and b is 20. But they wanted you to use c as the cost, so y has to be a c. And they want you to use M for months, so X has to be M. And I know it's really weird, X is M and slope is M as well. But you just kind of got to get over that being, that being weird. We have to find the total cost of a membership after 10 months. Put that in for M. What did we get for that answer? 300, okay. So good to go on that one? You want to cook a roast till it's well done, you have to allow 30 minutes of cooking time for every pound of beef. That's your slope. <clears throat> Last time you cooked a three pound roast, it took 100 minutes. That's a coordinate. And I would actually just go to point slope form because I got a point and a slope right now, don't I? So point slope form. Can you sing the song for the people in the video? Y minus Y equals slope. Okay, well that was good news. They forgot, or they did not forget the song. We'll put the 100 in for the second Y, the 30 in for the M, and a 3 in for the second X. And then I would go ahead and convert that to slope intercept. It doesn't take long at all. You can distribute your 30, 30 X minus 90. You can add your 100 over. You guys are right. I, I did this one last week because this is the one that Noah saved the day because we had done it wrong, remember? Yeah. Yeah. So this was a y minus 100, and I'm going to add the 100 over. I'm going to add the 100 over to here. So it's y equals 30x plus 10. Is that right? Yeah. Except they don't want us to use y's and x's. They want us to use t for time, so y is a t. 
And they want us to use W for weight, so that has to be your answer. How long will it take to cook a five pound roast? Just stick a five in for W. So 30 times five plus 10, 160 minutes. Three years after a maple tree is planted, its height was seven feet. Stop, how can we use that information? That's a coordinate, I heard somebody say it. That's a coordinate, three, seven. Nine years after it was planted, the tree was height was 13. Stop. How can we use that information? Coordinate. All right. Go ahead and find the slope of those coordinates for me. All right. Everybody gave me thumbs up. They got their slope to be one. I would plop it into point slope form, but I would use my favorite point to do that. What point would you guys use? I would probably pick three seven as my favorite as well. The numbers are smaller. Y minus Y equals slope X minus X. I do like getting it into slope intercept because it will be easier to use when we get to part B. So do a quick distribute of that one. And then just add the seven to the other side. So it's one X plus four. That's your answer to the first part. Are we okay on that? Part B. Part B. Yeah, I didn't even notice you were talking. How tall will the tree be in 20 years? How will I figure that one out? Plug the 20 in for X. Ricky is a scholar. So the 20 goes in for X. Ends up being 24. Hey, you know, I almost forgot. I would have missed part A because I used the wrong variables of part A. Oh, they are saying they want our answer in part A to be an equation that gives the height of a tree in terms of age, A. So you actually do want to label your Y as an H and your X as an A. You want to use the variables they want you to use, because like on the air test, they would count off for that. Now, I'm not the pickiest grader, so sometimes I don't count off for that, but I probably should be counting off for that. You want to use the correct variables. How fast is a tree growing per year? How can we answer that question? It's as easy as telling them what the slope is. The slope is how fast it's growing per year. So what's the slope? One, very good. So one foot per year. And then how tall is a tree when planted? Do you know how we would answer that question? It's just the y-intercept. The y-intercept would be the starting height of the tree at year zero. Not seven. Where are you getting a seven from? Um, y-intercept. Its height was seven. Height was seven at year three, oh, though. Okay. The y-intercept is four. Okay. All right, well, thanks for watching the video at home. We are going to play Board Buddies now in class doing the study party prom. So if you're at home and looking for more study resources, take a peek at the study pro party prom.